A lawmaker was in the middle of the budget padding scandal. It was a whistleblower, Abdulmumin Jibrin, who alleged fraud, accusing his colleagues in an exclusive interview right here on China's television. He stepped on toes, but what did he, the lawmaker really say? Here is a video to refresh your memory of how it all started. You took project that is meant for a constituency, diverted it to your farm. I said you took money meant for rent, wasted it, furnishing all sorts of guest houses, etc. I made specific allegation of massive corruption and abuse of office against the speaker. He's still seated there. You're still calling him speaker. I'm calling him speaker. And we're talking about fighting corruption in this country. Nobody is talking. Nobody wants to talk. Nobody wants to ask him to step down immediately. Specific allegations. He has not answered any. He has rushed to court. And when I wake up in the morning, everybody is going about his business normal. You know, you know what? If this outburst fails, I believe that that is the final dead point for the fight against corruption in this country. That was in 2016 when we had an exclusive interview with him and he spilled the beans on some of his colleagues. So his colleagues felt his action and utterances were damaging. The lawmaker was suspended in September of 2016 for a period of 180 legislative days. That, in real time, is a long time. Perhaps is meant to return sometimes very close to the election in 2019. Today on the floor of the House of Representatives, the speaker read an apology letter said to be from the lawmaker. The 180 days has lapsed, and the resolution equally said that he should tender a written apology, which he has done. So for, by this, he has fulfilled all the requirements of the resolution, and that he can accept Another thing happened with decision is taken. It will appear that um, he has fulfilled with the conditions stipulated by the House and he's free to resume legislative duties as from now, if he so wishes. Well, let's quickly get your view, uh, the views of my panel tonight on this one very important one the lawmaker did told me at that time in 2016 that if that series of outbursts that he gave fails and nothing happens that that was the dead end to corruption fights in nigeria mr gt ogunye joins us he's a lawyer and a regular analyst on channels television mr ogunye thank you so much for joining us on the program mm -hmm. you did fall and i remember that we had this conversation so many times about the issues of budget padding now the man said that at that time that look if all of this process failed fails or failed at that time the way he spoke uh he said that could have been the end of corruption fight in nigeria do you think so that is an exaggerated assertion. But his struggle was important for the culture of exposing sleaze and corruption in the legislature. Uh, his act of bravery, and that's what I call it, regardless of some of the um, insinuations that are made about his motive then, his act of bravery is an act that was important for exposing corruption in the legislature as it relates to manipulation of the all-important appropriation bill process. Uh, in the past, we had witnessed a uh, budget enhancement scandal, which led to Adolphus Wabara being sacked, being arraigned, that 56 million being put on the floor and all that and all that. And since that time, we've been having this problem with padding. Um, Adolphus Wabara was not alone. Fabian Osuji, mm -hmm. a minister, was also there. And I'm talking about the Obasanjo era. And since that time, we've been having this problem with our legislature. Uh, they play God with the appropriation bill and they dare the entire country. And I think that what Ibrahim did was very important. It was important that I went to court. It is important that the House of Representatives now that said that they would never bow or tremble 
uh, listening to the Supreme Court, which recently threw out a malevolent appeal that was meant to elongate his quest for judicial justice. And that eventually, I haven't seen the handwriting on the wall. They are now saying that, oh, they forgive him because the 180 days had lapsed anyway. So credit does not go to this House of Representatives. Nigerians will not forget how they play God with that issue. And Nigerians will not forget also the fact that he didn't have an executive backing. Uh, if I were president of the country, and I realized that a potential ally in the legislature that could take on his colleagues on the issue of appropriation needed support. I will give him support. Politically, the president right. refused to give that support. Now the president is being harassed on this budget. And so uh, he asked himself to blame right. with respect.